Well, this is the redux of Secret Space Volume 1, which was released in 2005. And in the years since I made the, the first Secret Space film, I've bought a very large telescope, third of a meter telescope. I've bought night vision intensity equipment. Uh, and I've also witnessed not only UFOs, but a lot of crop circles, uh, orbs of light, and also chemtrails with UFOs, all in the same frame. Um, and I've also been a guest on lots of UFO TV shows, such as Jaime Mossan's uh, TV show in Mexico. The making of the Secret Space uh, series is pretty phenomenal. Um, Secret Space One was one of the very first documentaries to be uploaded to the old Google video service, which no longer exists. Um, and then it miraculously turned up on YouTube. I didn't upload it. Um, and within about, uh, I would say about three and a half years, the first three and a half years of YouTube, Secret Space Volume One uh, ratcheted up something like 800 million views. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm kind of sure. I don't know, there, there are no statistics to check, but I'm pretty sure that my Illuminati film series and my Secret Space documentary film series were probably the first documentaries to ratchet up uh, more than a billion, a billion views on YouTube. Now, um, a lot has happened since I, I started the Secret Space series, so um, now's the time to do a so-called redux, which is what Hollywood call a kind of remake. Um, and of course we can make it now with very, very good quality HD technology. We have an unidentified flying object. So this is the first Redux additional clip to Secret Space Volume 1, and I hope you enjoy it.
Did it really happen? Did man really walk on the moon, just as Kennedy had challenged NASA to do? We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The photos of Apollo 11 moon landing have been criticized as being too perfect and looking like they've been photographed inside a TV studio with spotlights. Bill Casing is an ex-Rocketdyne engineer who points out that there should be a blast crater underneath the lunar module, but there isn't. Award-winning filmmaker and photographer David Percy has written a book called Dark Moon, which shows that the famous Apollo 11 photographs were all shot using multiple light sources something which can't happen if the astronauts were really on the moon. Jim Collier, an American investigator, has pointed out that the lunar module was far too small for two astronauts in full spacesuits to maneuver around inside. Jim Collier also believes that some of the footage showing the lunar module blasting off from the moon's surface has been filmed using a rotating model, just like the special effects techniques Hollywood blockbusters use today. Now, for the first time on film, we present new evidence which proves that at least some of the official NASA photographs taken on the lunar surface are definitely faked, or at the very least, heavily manipulated. Join us now on a quest for the truth to the moon. In this film, we shall not only prove beyond all reasonable doubt that many of the official NASA images of lunar exploration are fake, but we shall also examine the motives for the biggest lie put before the world. Why did NASA repeatedly fake lunar images and photographs? Why did NASA stage lunar expeditions which did not happen? The answer will surprise you. It can be summarized in just two words, money and UFOs. But before we look at the motives for lying on such a vast scale, let's look at where some NASA scientists came from. Pienemunde, Nazi Germany. For centuries, warmongering nations had been using primitive rockets as a weapon of war. China, Britain, and of course Hitler's Third Reich all used rockets to terrorize their enemies. Werner von Braun was an SS officer and rocket scientist. His team at Peenemunde designed the first cruise missile, the V-1 Doodlebug. Achtung, Achtung, Beistehen zum Feuern, Achtung, Achtung, Zündung, Beistehen. 
Motor starten. The V-2 rocket was the forerunner to the Saturn V rocket, which would supposedly take man to the moon. At the end of World War II, the American government were desperate to get hold of the Nazi rocket weapons, which had wrought havoc on the innocent people of Britain. The American government launched Project Paperclip, which secretly changed the war criminal files on Werner von Braun and his colleagues. Files which described these SS officers as an ardent Nazi were changed to read not an ardent Nazi. Werner von Braun, his team and the rocket factory at Peenemunde, which had terrorized Western Europe, was transported to the USA lock, stock and barrel. It soon became clear that the Nazis had a secret space program at Peenemunde and Nordhausen. The Hanabu craft utilized alternative propulsion systems such as Vril power, possibly back engineered from recovered crashed flying saucers. dozen astronauts have officially reported UFOs. UFOs. Hundreds of hours of UFO footage were filmed by astronauts aboard the space shuttle. Many of these UFOs can only be seen in ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light. Retired former Apollo astronauts and cosmonauts now tell their stories of their own personal UFO encounters. They have an unidentified flying object. The Enigma Channel, intelligent television for planet Earth. EnigmaTV.com Prescott Bush was the grandfather of today's George W. Bush. Whilst working with the Bank of America and the Jewish Warburg brothers in Wall Street, Prescott Bush helped arrange vast loans to the Third Reich. The Third Reich space scientists used Jewish prisoners as slaves to build gigantic underground bases and manufactured the V-2 rocket which would terrorize Europe during 1944 and 1945. At Nordhausen and other sites in Germany and Austria, Werner von Braun and his team of Nazi SS engineers built vast laboratories and rocket factories. The interior of an entire mountain was excavated to accommodate a secret space facility which was no less than one million square feet. It was here 
at Nordhausen, in top secret underground bases, that a huge number of experimental rocket ships and circular flying disks were developed. prototype V-7 craft was powered by engines manufactured by BMW. The V-7 used 12 BMW 028 engines which were powered with helium. Radical fuselage shapes were developed which would later lead to the emergence of stealth aircraft and the cruise missile. The first uh, thing that I'd like to show you is that within a few months of uh, releasing Secret Space Volume 1, um, I hosted a space camp at my home in the south of France. And amazingly, we were chemtrailed and it was witnessed by about 30 people. And there were small spherical UFOs flying around the actual chemtrails. Not only that, but we had fighter jets, military fighter jets, sort of weaving in and out of the actual chemtrail itself. And uh, my property is pretty big, it covers about 12 acres, and they, de they deliberately flew over about five times. And as I say, there was about 30 guests doing uh, a space camp where we do UFO watches, and every single space camp I've done there are UFOs appearing, and that is no kidding. Uh, and in the, in the clip, you can even hear Bert Janssen, who's a documentary filmmaker like me, uh, saying, oh, Chris, it's very nice that you've laid on these UFOs and these chemtrails. Um, I was telling people to look out for spherical UFOs amongst the chemtrails, simply because two years before, uh, an Enigma Channel viewer had contacted me from Chandler in Arizona and said, Hey Chris, I filmed military helicopters following um, a chemtrail plane and in the footage I could see spherical UFOs. So I was telling everyone, Hey, you know, keep your eyes out for spherical UFOs. And uh, it's a very interesting piece of footage. It was filmed on the old fashioned uh, video format that we had back then. So this is the first Redux additional clip to Secret Space Volume 1 and I hope you enjoy it.
opportunity yeah, because like we've seen the 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 thing that the thing well, that, 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 that the things are yeah, and the, the thing is, is that you would never get... Uh, oh, all morning, fart. Yeah, all morning. You know, I, I, I bought this place out in the middle of nowhere to get away from all this bullshit. The fuckers have come and found me. Place, they're not the same place. Not the same place. Uh, yeah, they're different. The, the one on the right is definitely a military plane. You can see by the shape. You can hear them now. Yeah. Wow, this made a big turn. It's can anybody see the really tiny one? Yeah, we can see it now. He's oh, following the trail. Oh, yeah, he's there's in the two, trail. There's two of them. Two two in the trail. Hey, watch the tripod. Get out of the way of the camera. Sorry? Get out of the way of the camera, whoever's ever, touching the tripod. And you have to go in the trail. They're yeah, in the trail now. In the trail. Well, I'll tell you now, this is bloody difficult filming this. That looks like a fucking orb, doesn't it? Ah, is it an orb? Where is it? Ah, I've got the little tiny one. Yeah, the other one is in the other trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, can anybody see any spheres there? Train your eyes. Hey, one's... He's split off. Yeah. He's split off, man. Hey, you can hear sound waves. Yeah, I heard it's the boom. Yeah. Wow. The one that's turned off has turned his trailer and he's turned it back on again. Oh, again. They're, they're dropping another chemical to react with the big chemical. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That is exactly what's going on. Get out of the way of the tripod, whoever's there. vision. <laughs> Chris, that's an extraordinary fucking view of the little one. He's trying his left over there to the left slightly, mate. Can anybody see any spheres or train your eyes on very, very tiny objects on the edge of the thing? Is there a little eeny weeny tiny one still there? Yeah. Yeah, it is and it's coming back. Like we said. Where is it, darling? Look over there. Okay. And it's coming back over to join the It's so difficult. Bloody hell, this is almost impossible to film. This kind of thing, if you watch that on the telly, you have to There's a there's a I'll tell you what, there's a really through this camera, man. There's some very, very weird things you can He's cut, he's straightening up onto that trail. Uh, I think maybe he is diverting off the path. Well, I wouldn't say to make Is there a, is the military jet there? Yes. Oh yeah, I can see him, yeah. No more blue sky. he he's gone back to that well, weaving. Well, I've thing uh, seen a lot of chemtrail footage and I must say um, this is the most curious and weird chemtrail event that I've ever seen. The business jet was obviously not flying from A to B, carrying passengers as a normal business jet would. It was actually, I suppose, playing the role of an observer plane. And it was uh, weaving in and out of the right-hand chemtrail. And uh, reviewing the footage afterwards, we realized that there were actually two military fighter jets flying in that chemtrail. Now, now that we've had time to analyze this footage, we realized that there were actually lots of orbs there, but we couldn't see them with the naked eye. And we couldn't see them through the viewfinder. And the kind of um, assumption which I've come to 
after watching this for several years now, is that the business jet was carrying probably military personnel who wanted to have a close-up view of these orbs. And the fighter jets were there, possibly, to um, protect the VIP military, I presume, on the business jet. Or, uh, maybe even more sinister than that, perhaps these fighter jets were there and they were actually firing, or willing to fire, upon the small orbs which we uh, later discovered on the footage after we uh, managed to analyse the footage in the studio. And this was 2006, and this is the first time that uh, this has ever been uh, broadcast, and uh, it was witnessed by more than 35 people, and the sky was completely blue before those jets turned up, after they had left uh, the airspace above my property, it was cloudy for the rest of the day and it even rained slightly, which is very uh, rare for uh, the end of June uh, in the south of France. Now, the $64,000 question is, of course, what are these orbs? I believe that they are probes. I do not think that uh, they come from the Earth. I think they uh, come from an extraterrestrial source. I don't think they're manned. I think they're very small. They're deliberately small because they're so small, they're not picked up by passenger aircraft radar. And the resolution of passenger craft uh, radar is just not good enough to actually pick these uh, small orbs up and that means that they can fly wherever they want and there is a relationship between chemtrails and these orbs the same as there is a relationship between crop circles and these orbs and my research has been uh, targeting whether these orbs are exactly the same as the orbs which we see making crop circles. Now my research uh, on chemtrails has led me down a very dark path indeed. The tests of uh, various filaments and weird detritus that's uh, been collected from chemtrail deposits shows that there's barium and aluminium hydroxide. The world is undergoing an epidemic of dementia and dementia is created through aluminium poisoning. Is there a faction with billions if not trillions of dollars who want to create an epidemic of dementia? Is there a wicked cabal who want to create an epidemic of cancer? The answer is I don't know, but all I do know is that dementia is becoming more common and so is cancer. There is a longer, more in-depth version available on the Enigma Channel. The Enigma Channel is like WikiLeaks, but instead of reading documents about secret subjects, you can put your feet up and watch thousands of fascinating documentary films covering subjects which have been censored and suppressed from the mainstream media for decades. The Enigma Channel is a 100% independent TV network with documentaries and TV shows which are not available on YouTube, not on Netflix, and are unique to the Enigma Channel.
Since 2011, we've been using time-lapse cameras to make documentaries and uh, research chemtrails for the Enigma channel. We use the Canon D550 and we also use Sony 4K Cine Alta cameras, which are the same cameras that George Lucas uses to film Star Wars. So they're very, very high definition. And what we do is we uh, set up our time-lapse cameras, uh, usually in the summer when it should be a clear blue sky in the south of France and I live right next to a beach. What we've found is that if we set up our cameras, say, for two and a half hours, which is what you're seeing here, we then compress that into 15 or 30 second time-lapse films. What we have noticed is that once the first morning chemtrails are sprayed, no normal cloud formations can then be seen. This is very, very much weather engineering. The normal cloud, which usually appears in the morning hours, uh, once those first chemtrail planes come over, there is no more normal cloud. If you take an entire day and you compress that using time lapse, you will soon find that there must be at least three or four tons of chemtrail chemicals being dropped on each region. This is costing billions of dollars. Who is paying for it? Now, for all of you chemtrail skeptics, and I know that there are many people who believe that, uh, people who believe in chemtrails are just nutty uh, idiots, here is time-lapse footage of a normal sky. And you can see that if there are no chemtrail planes flying over, the sky is completely normal. As soon as those chemtrail planes appear, these normal clouds no longer form and it's as if the chemicals that are being spread